Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're gonna be solving a Physics 7B linear transport and exponential decay practice problem. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps our channel. So this is the problem that we're gonna be working with today. Your instructor forgets their water bottle outside in their car overnight. The outside temperature is four uh, Celsius, the water bottle was 20 Celsius when it was left outside. The half-life of the temperature is one hour. And what we have to do is make a plot of the temperature of the water bottle versus time for three hours, starting from when it was left outside. Uh, and we have to do it for at least three hours. So as you can see, I have an empty graph over here and I have uh, the basic information. So this is just a plotting exercise um, which is very helpful at the beginning because you do need to know what we consider a complete answer to a problem. So uh, there are at least three different things that we are always going to ask you whenever we, uh, you know, whenever we give you enough information. So we always need to have an initial value, which is an intercept over here. We also need a final tendency, which is the right asymptotic value at the end of your exponential decay. And if possible, you also need to have the right uh, half value marked on your graph. So let's just go ahead and make this and let's just get started. So we know that our initial temperature is exactly 20 Celsius. So our initial temperature is gonna start over here uh, just from reading the problem. And we need to figure out what is going to be the final temperature for the water bottle. Now, a lot of people, and I'm pretty sure that this was mostly time pressure, uh, what they did is that they did a decay all the way to zero degrees. However, uh, this is not what happens in real life. What you saw on Physics 7A is that um, you know, if outside it's a very big reservoir, it's a very big system, and your water bottle starts at 20, then what's going to happen is that the outside is going to suck that heat away until these two are at exactly the same temperature. Now, usually, again, on Physics 7a, you saw that if you have two temperatures, they're both of them are going to stabilize at the exact same final temperature not necessarily in the middle, but some temperature in between. However, in situations in which you have a very, very small system, such as a water bottle versus a very big system, which is literally the world, just the outside, then what's gonna happen is that uh, this water bottle is just gonna go to four degrees and this is just gonna stay at four degrees. A water bottle is just not gonna uh, heat up outside. <laughs> Um, so our final temperature is 4 degrees, so my final asymptote is going to be over here. So I know that my graph is going to start here and it's going to go down like this, but I also need to have the right half-life. In this case, they actually asked me for three half-lives, so I do need to be mindful of that. So the, ha the first half-life is always... Uh, well, first of all, it's going to happen over here, which is at 1, because the half-life is 1 hour. And the y-value is going to be the middle point between initial and final. So the middle point between 20 and 4, you can just do it as an average, is 12. So at the first half-life, you're going to have a decay after one hour of 12. Now, two hours is the second half-life, because if this is t1 half, then this is two times t1 half. So this is the second half-life. So at the second half-life, which happens over here, the definition is, and uh, this is something that a lot of students get wrong because students think that if the first half-life is halfway there, then the second half-life is the other halfway there, so you should be getting to 
your final value and that is not true. The second half-life by definition is the middle point between the first half-life and your final value. So it would actually be the middle point between 12 and 4. So uh, oh, this is just going to be 10. Oh no, 8. Duh. Um, yeah, so over here, so this is where our graph is going to be. Now this is the third half-life. And the third half-life, by definition, is the middle point between the second half-life and the final value. So this is the middle point between uh, 8 and 4. So that would be equal to 6. And then this is the fourth half-life. And as you can probably guess at this point, this is the middle point between the third half-life and the final value. So this is the middle point between 6 and 4, so it's equal to 5. So we have enough half-lives to go ahead and get full credit for our answer. So my graph should just be... There we go. And this is going to get full credit because I have a correct initial value, I have a correct final tendency, they were asking me for at least three half-lives and I did four. So clearly I have more than enough to get full credit for this answer. Uh, very important thing is to just be mindful of your half-life definitions because a lot of people do get this wrong. And you know, it is a fundamental part of exponential decay to just know your definitions. So I do consider this a very useful problem, even if it's a little bit on the easier side. But, you know, you'll be surprised. A lot of students do get those half-lives confused. And we're not even mentioning the time constant in this problem. So definitely a good starter problem on this uh, exponential decay topic. So I really hope that this was useful to you guys. If it was, please make sure to leave a like. If you have a questions, as usual, feel free to leave a comment. And I will see you guys on the next video.